really just a bunch of copy pasta nonsense. Like, look at how stupid some of this shit is. An experimental AI revolving real time adaptation that was sold off to Nintendo in early 1995. This AI was tested and tried in the July 29th, 1995 build. But when playtesters reported unexplainable differences and disturbing imagery, Nintendo would go on to deny the existence of the AI. Yo, hold up, I can actually shed some light on that last one. Released in 1996, Mario 64 was a monumental achievement. While it was neither the first video game with fully 3D graphics, nor was it the first game with full 3D movement, it was the first game with a fully 3D environment that gave you full control over a character that navigated 3D space independent of the camera. It's hard to really articulate the feeling playing Mario 64 the first time evoked. It was something groundbreaking and new, and while it wasn't the first to do any of the things it did, it was the first to do them all in tandem with such flawless execution. Is this how people in the 30s felt when they first watched Wizard of Oz? I don't know, but it was a breath of fresh air. It felt like a whole new world. Now, I'd love to disseminate the game's atmosphere, but first we need to talk about parasocial relationships. No, trust me, I'm, I'm tying this together, bear with me. In 1956, psychologists Donald Horton and Richard Wall coined the term parasocial relationships to address the phenomenon of middle-class housewives watching TV and thinking Lucille Ball was their best friend. Like, they knew they didn't know her, but on a subconscious level, their mind kind of compartmentalized Lucille Ball in the same space in their mind palace that they'd store people like Bill from accounting. This phenomenon actually dates way back before 1956, like I'm sure people in Victorian London were like sending letters to Arthur Conan Doyle going That Professor Moriarty bloke sure is a real tosspot, ain't he? I bet we could take a carriage down to the pub for a pint, you and I. Because I feel like I really know you, Arthur. What if we... What if we kissed in Scotland Yard? Just kidding. Unless... The point is, the human brain isn't really properly conditioned to comprehend the exponential forward march of technology. Your caveman lizard brain can't really distinguish between, like, fictional characters in a book, celebrities on TV, or whatever, from, like, real people you actually know on a personal level. And this psychology extends to video game environments. 2D games, especially platformers, especially Mario platformers, would often portray an abstract, unreal world with perfectly square hills and all sorts of like weird, impractical, unnatural terrain and like shit flying around everywhere. Which is fine, you see that and you accept it as a video game level. It looks that way so you can run and jump on it, no further analysis is required. Uh, conversely, 3D games at the time were mostly racing or fighting games, which depicted realistic environments, you know, like racetracks with buildings and trees littered on the side of the road like wrestling mats on a beach surrounded by palm trees, or a military installment, or the rooftop of a building, or a, a different military installment. In fact, this philosophy extends to most 3D games, even platformers. Later Mario games would depict Italian villages or theme parks, later Sonic games were set in urban environments or theme parks. Mario 64 is unique because it employs the abstract, surreal architecture of a 2D game, but presents it within a 3D space. And that's why it's left such an impact on so many people. Think how a caveman would think. Like, the human brain innately understands that 2D isn't real. Uh, Mario World is like a cave painting depicting a wildebeest or some shit on a cave in, in like, ancient Belgium. It's 2D, therefore it's fake. Mario 64, on the other hand, is 3D, and is therefore perceived as being real on a subconscious level. This wouldn't be a problem for, like, Tekken. And, I mean, some environments are fairly realistic, like the front of the castle, the inside of the castle, behind the castle, really, it's just the castle, with that eerily quiet ambience and that statue with the plaque that's, like, too compressed and blurry to read, and it looks like it says, OH GOD, THE PROPHECY! So let me ask you a question. What the fuck is Wet Dry World? It's the brain of the AI! Like, like if that existed in real life, what function could it possibly serve? 
It's the brain of the AI. It's just a bunch of random, pointless structures, chaotic, meaningless geography that exist it only in service of gameplay, rather than depicting any sort of identifiable structure or environment from real life. It's like, your brain doesn't really know how to cope with a space like that. You know it's not real. It makes no effort to present itself as if it's real, but because it's a 3D environment, your mind kind of accepts it as real, uh, resulting in what's been dubbed as the NEGATIVE EMOTIONAL AURA! This is further exacerbated by the fact that Mario 64 uses a significant amount of stock photo assets as in-game textures. Uh, it also uses actual doctored photographs for some of the level backgrounds. Incorporating these visuals into a world consisting of surreal shapes and abnormal constructs further blurs the line between what's presented as real and what's not. And did I mention the castle grounds? Like, that shit's creepy, because it's got no music. Just the loudest silence you've ever heard. Like, you expect music, because it's a Mario game. You expect it to be like every other Mario game, where your ears are immediately assaulted by bombastic Latin jazz and Yoshi noises. But nah. Mario 64 starts you off like this. It's different. It's quiet. Your expectations have been violated. You're caught off guard. These concepts coalesce into a somewhat eerie atmosphere like no other, where something's kinda off, but you can't quite place it. In short, Mario 64 is what I would describe as a liminal space. And also, there's that statue in the backyard. It says Eternal Star, but some guy on the internet thought it said L is Real 2401, which is a bunch of nonsense gibberish, but he thought it was some kind of cryptic clue to unlock Luigi in the game, even though there's absolutely no indication of that character's presence in the game data whatsoever. Two plus, four plus zero plus one equals seven, July, and 24 plus zero plus one equals 25th, July 25th. July 25th, 2020, the date of the huge source code and uncompiled assets leak, exactly 24 years and one month to the very day this game dropped in Japan. Data miners discovered amongst the CBS archives a model for Luigi, which means L was real this whole time, and holy shit!